Hey guys, what's cracking? Guys, Ben here. Uh, today, got David, uh, but boy, want to. Uh, say hi, guys. Hey, hello. Hello. Uh, so, guess what? We're almost done with competitive season. Yay. Also know what's up? We're probably going to get an English ban list sometime pretty soon here. So we're here to give some predictions, maybe even a bit of a wish list, and just generally discussing what we could get on the English ban list and what we probably should be getting on the English ban list. Uh, and so that's basically the long and the short of it. Uh, let's start with standard, no real wishy-washy stuff, no pad. Let's just get right into it. So uh, standard, any prediction, boys? Hmm. Uh, it's like... Does anything need to be it? That's... <laughs> it, it depends on how you look at it, right? Because personally, if you're looking at it from the new Set 7 stuff that like we just got, we're in Set 7 for global, right? I don't think anything really needs to hit. Now, of course, people say this is Youth Burke meta, and to be pretty frank, it kind of is Youth Burke meta, but Youth Burke is going to sort of scale off once Chrono Jet comes around, and also if Ebisu ever came around, but it's probably not. So, Youth Burke is a really solid deck, but even things like Ava can sort of still mess it up. So, it's not that big of a deal in comparison. It's just a really good deck. Uh, so, I don't know if that would necessarily need to get hit, and normally be like wash it, but it's certainly not something we would predict to get hit. My Personally, I don't even predict anything for Standard. I don't think they're going to lay up finger on standard for uh global I, I i know they did something for ebisu in jp but ebisu's only in jp so it's kind of an exception what do you think david uh personally i think it's probably going to be a copy and paste of the jp list i could totally see them taking off dark strain and mm. inlet and letting magnolia run free for youthberg because it would give youthberg a good challenger alongside Ava and Overlord. Um, I don't know if they're going to wait on that, but like realistically, I don't see the issue with it. I know a lot of people have some nightmares about Magnolia, but um, <laughs> I, I, I kind of think they, they'll just, this is going to be an unrestriction list, and I foresee Dark Strain coming back for sure. And I think maybe Inlet just comes back to just take it off. Right, right. Because... Sorry, yeah. What um, with what's coming up, I don't I don't see a reason. Like Gray Four's decks are pretty slow by comparison, and uh, if we're talking about the current format and like looking at the current format, like how how it progressed throughout the season, right? Um, you know, like maybe at the beginning of the season we were thinking uh, Gravidia might get hit here because it's been really dominant, but as soon as Ava came on. Where'd all the Gravidia go? Mm, like, not right, right. Like, this, this pie chart is really deceiving in that sense because this is the entire season. Um, and Ava only came out, Ava's promo, which made it good, only came out a month ago? A month, ago? A month or two ago. Yeah, it's yeah. it's been relatively recent. But for instance, down here, when you look at the overall list that you've got going on, when you go near the top for the recent ones, you look at the last like six or seven. Ava, Leticia, Ava, Ava, Leticia, Ava. Like Ava has like suddenly just really started coming up and being prominent during the last few BCSs of the season. So that it the fact that it's on this sliver is not a product of its power, it's a product of the timing. Yes, Ava's conversion rate has been crazy. Absurd. Yeah, that's the, the, the deck is nuts. Uh, me, me and Wani, we, we actually had to go to, uh, well, I say had to, it was a good experience, but BCS Anaheim, right? We were over there, and uh, yeah, the Avas were there. The Avas were there in force. One thing about this pie chart, too, that gives people sort of a faulty impression is some of these other uh, decks. Like, for instance, Mahar. Mahar has fallen off, like, a fair bit. Mahar was going strong at the beginning of the season, but it definitely fell off. By comparison, there's other stuff that are not quite popping up but actually could be seeing more play for it Lutitia, this tiny sliver down here Lutitia might actually come back a bit more the deck is surprisingly uh able to perform despite being a little bit weird with it uh if you actually look more into the, like top fours and stuff then this is where it starts to get even a little bit more interesting right because <laughs> It still looks kind of same near the top here, but then you sort of see, oh, Lutetia's a little bit bigger. 
Oh, Great Odds is a little bit bigger. Uh, we're getting a little bit more specific about what other kind of decks are there. The Great Four decks are... They're not doing so hot. Prison is the best one, but that's because it has the best Great Four. So, certainly none of the Great Four decks will need to get hit, but rather, it's like you say, an unrestriction list is probably in order. If they were to hit anything, it wouldn't be until the future when Bushy really realizes that Chronoja is a problem deck. Okay, alright. How about this then? What else do we think can get unhit? If there is any. Hmm. That's it, because all there is is Dark Strain and Inlet. Those are the only two hits in Standard, and I think they could both come off. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> it just tells you about how Standard is these days, right? Like, Standard just is chilling as a format, so... And honestly, there isn't really much of a prediction, and I don't really have much of a wishlist. Like, if we were to say a wishlist thing, uh, uh, I'll, I'll just go first here and say that my wishlist would be uh, the sooner they eroded the crest, the better, but that's the only thing I'd really wish for. As well as not even out until a bit later. February. Yeah. February. Yeah, it wouldn't even be for this list. It'd be for whatever list, like, Koronchet would get hit on. <laughs> Mathia comes out in April. Um... As, as far as far as wishes, my wish list is that everything comes off. I realistically only think that like Dark Shrine comes off, but like uh, my wish list is everything comes off because everything is fine. <laughs> right. That seven's gonna be such a fun format. I know, right? Especially when Ava's like, look at these first places, right? When you look at first places, oh my God. this is so daunting. Ava is big, dude. Suddenly. Gravidia doesn't so seem so big. Gravidia has the same number of tops as, like, Greedon, it looks like, or just Kyrie, about. <laughs> Kyrie's really deceiving here, because Kyrie was really, really good at the beginning of the season, um, and Kyrie did not do so well. In oh, the yeah. Ka part of the season, but... People swear by Kyrie, but she's fallen off. Letissi is probably the better deck. I'd say so. I think, I'd... I think it's the better deck. Yeah. Uh, Leticia feels like it's more quick on the ball compared to Kyrie, and its advantage is more inherent to its own strategy, whereas Kyrie needs to like use different engines and pieces for it. Like I would say it's the better deck, although uh, when Kyrie can get going, uh, it seems like it starts to like yeah, it's very nasty. It seems like it outperforms Leticia at first glance, but Leticia just has like some other X factors going for it that makes it more performative here. Uh, but I, overall, that's basically all we have to say about standard, right, guys? This isn't. <laughs> This isn't really a format worth discussing very much in the context of a ban list discussion. It's it's fine. Standard's great. Best format we've got, right? Yep. So, V Premium. This is a monster. Hi, Steam Maidens. Let's talk about you. <laughs> so, uh, there's a lot of talk about Steam Maidens, obviously. We're in sort of a tier zero format. But surprisingly enough, as to what the ban list would have to do to address this that's contentious there's not really a uniform consensus when it comes to hitting steam maidens so starting off with predictions what do we think bushy is gonna do because i think uh we were talking about it a bit i mean we kind of came to the same basic conclusion they're probably just gonna hit colossus and leave it at that <laughs> yeah yeah I, and so go let's go in a bit about Bushy's track record with it, right? You know, about why we think this. Because Bushy has a history with things like Prism and whatnot where they will hit a deck very lightly, especially if it's relatively more recent, but they'll hit a deck pretty right lightly, think, oh, all right, this should even things out, make it more level playing with other stuff, but it's still just gonna run around and be a problem. And that's a very problematic Bushy. It's a problematic habit that Bushy's picked up uh can you think of other examples man yes uh it's pretty uh pretty obvious that percival should have been banned mm. earlier than a year a year and a half after its release yeah instead of just limiting it <laughs> making it the sacky one up that it was yeah that was a terrible idea yeah or or just choice for stricking it with gurgit like it wasn't gonna get played in any other gold paladin deck <laughs> and then duke pops up and you know took the better by storm for a hot minute <laughs> yeah that's another thing right like bushy for some reason seems to play they're very conservative with how they hit ban lists in something like v and it's unfortunate because 
this is the exact opposite of what we would want, right? If if we were to like segue into a just very quickly into what more of a wish list type of thing would it be, although we're more gonna stick on the prediction section here. But if we're being wishlisty about it, they would want they would need to uproot a lot of stuff. We're talking not just seeing steammates, we're also talking about hitting the other big Excel decks and whatnot. You know, G boot decks. A lot of G boot decks, oh. right? Well, before we get to that, sticking on the predictions, in regard to that, do we predict anything else outside of Colossus? I... Uh, so there's there's like three ways they can go about hitting Steam mains, and in, in my opinion, the most realistic one I see is them banning Colossus, because that is, like, this. we're in a tier 0 format, expect them to, like, get more than a slap on a wrist. But the lightest possible hit I could see them doing, and I think it's messed up if they do it, but I wouldn't put it past Bushy Road if they just say, ah, we're going to choice restrict Alol and Colossus. Mm. And they're just going to say, you can't play Colossus and Steam Mains. And I think that's a terrible idea, yeah, by the way. Because it, it or... addresses the inherent issue that is Colossus's effect, being a rear guard battle door for the entire turn. That's a really bad design. Yeah, it's not future proofed at all. <laughs> I, I'm not going. I'm not going to entertain the idea of Intahara is the reason why this deck is broken. Like because Intahara is a really good card, and it is going to push Steam Maidens. But like you're not addressing like the issue of Steam Maidens, which is a rear guard guard restrict. That's a turn wide guard restrict that is going to be played in any future gear chronicle deck if it wasn't steam mains it was gonna be something else eventually right it it's it, it just had to it was a ticking time bomb essentially and that's the problem with colossus so just choice restricting when you just choice restrict we we already see saw another example of why this is a bad idea with percival you shouldn't just yep. leave it at that when you realize that it's a problem because of what it is, not because of what it's with. Uh, we're not, it's not just like the Steam Maidens was so uniquely in a position to abuse Colossus more than anything else in the future could have. So that that's the problem. And, and as we like scale towards more like top four and even to first place, you see more and more that yeah this is the one big deck to talk about these other decks right here some of them anyway that's a uh, glendios is kind of meme man that the this <laughs> gabriel guy's a legend but you could also just see that some of the other prominent decks uh gurgit has sort of fallen off um other excel decks that are actually on the rise you've got leopold reverse which i think if they actually did do proper amount of hitting to Steam Maiden, and Leopold would end up being the best deck, as long as it didn't get hit as well. Uh, I would also think that Vanquisher is a potential big boy. You've also got a couple other decks that are just annoyingly uh, persistent in the format, like Astral Poet and Night Rose. They aren't Excel decks, but the, the point is you sort of have like three rungs to it. You have Steam Maidens at the top because it's dysfunctional. Then right below them, you have the XL Hellboys, which is Gurgit, Thavis, Leopold, and Vanquisher. But then right below that, then you have a couple other of the decks that could, you know, end up thrashing you, but a little bit more roguish these days, which is Luard, uh, Night Rose, and Astral Poet. Or, uh, Royals kind of do stuff too, but I wouldn't say that. I'm going to be very honest. I think that, like, Astral Poets is probably right up there with the Excel decks. Astral Poets can really mess you up, dude. That's a scary ass deck if you have a proper pilot. Yeah, it's um, Astral Poets, and then uh, Jewel Knights has also been doing really well. Mm. And it's really because of Ashley yeah, Reverse. Ashley Reverse is an insane win con. It can like one yeah. punch you pretty hard. All right. All right. So just to get it out there, our prediction is just a uh, hit to Steam Maiden, nothing else. No preemptive hits, just Steam Maiden hits. Yeah, uh, that's my prediction. Right. I don't think they're gonna hit anything else because right. this is this is but all right. As since we're there, then in terms of wish list, which one of these decks would we hit, and what would we hit? Well, let's start with you, Juan. What what do, what do you think you would hit beyond Stevens, and what would you do to hit it? Uh, let's see. Well, I'll be frank here. <laughs> I haven't played V as much in order to tell you more or things about Steam Maidens, but it's like, I can just 
go for like a more kind of obvious one, but maybe it's a bit of a low blow. I can't, because Night Rose, uh, Night Rose has just always been just rogue. Maybe mm-hmm. you you would like <laughs> tone it down a bit and actually do what several people have been asking for, which would be hitting Skull Dragon. Mmm. Hit that goddamn Skull Dragon. Yeah, that's a good one. If you really want to make Night Rose feel okay, yeah, you, you, you hit that goddamn Skull Dragon. <laughs> and then for like Astral Poet, actually give it a weakness and hitting Aeonasis, I want to say. <laughs> Aeonasis, yeah. The, Aeonasis does way too much, doesn't it, right? You know, it searches the Valk. Um, on top of the fact that it's also sort of your pseudo get around PG, it's like a get out of jail free card as far as guards are going, and that's pretty crazy to think about. And it also just accelerates force markers for you. It's just a completely wild card. And yeah, I've I've heard of like on the Astral Poet note. If you want, if Astral Poets to become more of an issue, I have heard. Uh, rather than simply getting rid of and aces, I I have like thought about this about choice restricting Aeonasis with uh, Origin Deity. Because uh, essentially then you sort of have to pick. Do you rather have more consistent access to your Valk and a mid-range ability to just stay in the game, but you only get one Valk swing per turn? Or do you go for the double Valk swing, but now you're a little bit more Hail Mary as a deck? So it, it's it's under the same ethos that you have broached here, which is give the deck a weakness. You know, it's not as, it's not as good as shoring up where it lacks. And... Uh, you got any ideas in the Astral of, Poet uh, front? Uh, wait, sir, go on. Well, I was just going to say, in terms of the Excel decks, I don't know what you would hit if mm. you want to hit something. That's why I was just going to offer it to you guys, if you guys have any ideas for that. Ah, the Excel stuff. Uh, <laughs> David, what do you hit in Thavis if you want to hit Thavis? Mm, it feels... <sighs> What do you hit in Thava? Uh, I mean, like, there's like, there's a super obvious like choices, like um, like like Coral Salt, for instance, because it gives you a lot of early game, mm. like probably a little too much early game, and you would just be limiting it like to lower quantities, um, just so that you can't, you know, just like throw out multiple Coral Salt on like turn two. That's... But I, there's so many pieces to that deck that are making it good that I feel like if one, if you if you hit one piece of it, like they they've got something they can replace it with. Um, I think Thavas is fine? Question mark. I think Thavas is more of a problem in premium than it is in V. Yeah. But, um, it Thavas isn't really the deck I'd go after here. Um, I feel like. I'd go after Gurgit before Thavas. Um, a, because Gurgit has a few more tops, but um, I don't know how you go about hitting Thavas, if I'm being honest with you. I think you hit the draw. Like, I'm not as much of a. I, I don't think. I'm, I'm not as big of an expert mm. on Thavas, but yeah, you're probably go on like the draw engine. Like, right. Um, the Narissa Persistence. Like, I think it's stuff. Coral. Yeah. You Narissa. Could. Narissa. I mean, I know you don't draw your Narissas, but uh, yeah. the, the good Thavis players do, and that's an issue. Yes. <laughs> okay, so I've seen I've seen Naps pop off with Narissa, and I'm like, yeah, okay. Like, this card's crazy. I wish I drew it. <laughs> mm, <laughs> Never draw, mm, draw the Narissa, so, right? Uh, um, but yeah, I don't I don't play Thavis as much, so I don't know if I'm like the expert on that. Um, but as far as like Gurgit goes. Um, that I can talk about. <laughs> I can talk about Gurgit. Um, and with Gurgit, I think the most absurd parts of Gurgit is probably how you can kind of multi attack out of nowhere with uh, Wonderizel. Hmm. I think that's part of, like, not, not fantastic, um, is when you hit, like, Wonderizel at the top of your deck on Gurgit turns, where you have, like, tons of power to your front row. And then, like, you just get to get multiple swings. Like, I call, like, two Wonder Ezels, like, off the top of my deck, and then get, like, four more attacks with, like, plus 20 or plus 10, plus 15, depending. 
Um, and, you know, it's a less balanced card, if you will, than, uh, say, Sagramore, which has to be called from hand. Um, you also have Holy Shines that are now available to Gurgit lists. Yeah, it's weird, though, because I think Holy Shine's super awkward. Um, because A, it requires you... <laughs> it makes Gurgit just a turn slower, which is actually terrible. It's mm. actually terrible for it to be a turn slower, uh, at least when you're playing, like, Steam Maiden. And, um, because if Steam Maidens go first, um, then they do their thing on grade 3 turn, even without Colossus. So let's assume, like, Colossus is gone. They do their thing on turn 3. And then if they get to re-ride on turn 4 to get the second Force Marker, you're effed. That's it. <laughs> you're done. That's the GG. So, I mean, like... It's it's a little bit of a fast format, if I'm being honest. I don't, I don't. Maybe like if it's a slight bit slower, and we'll see it. But like it's it feels awkward to me, and you have to use counter blast for it. That's why like that was my thing with Percival, right? Was that like if you did ride into Percival, you had to use two counter blasts for that, and that's so easy to deny. Um, so it, it, it's it's okay, I think. But I don't like I don't think that's what like you go after with Gurgit, you know? Yeah. I think going after Gurgit in of itself is sort of a weird thing. And I, and also I don't predict that they would even just do it in general. No. Yeah. But I don't personally, I don't think they hit anything but the main. I think if you were to hit Gurgit, I just hit the mock slash and say, get rid of that thing. Uh, yeah. I, 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 I ripped their mock slash. Cause that's a really I mean, big play extension for them. Yeah. And I mean, like, I don't know if I would want to take that away from every gold paladin deck. I'd rather just, like, take that away from Gurgit. <laughs> Honestly, Gurgit Ezreal doesn't need it. Duke doesn't need it. Does Aggravain need Box Slash? I mean, who plays Aggravain? So um, there you go. I don't think taking away from the clan's that big of a deal. Terror. Yeah, I think, you, like, I, I could see Mox Slash. Yeah. I think it's, like, Mox Slash and, like, Wonder Ezreal are, like, your two quote unquote unfair extenders. Right, right. Um, and and Wonder Ezel um, would be unfair against Ezel to like hit unironically. I don't know. I, I just, I've been playing a lot more Vanquisher lately, but in playing Vanquisher, I'm like, I have no idea what I hit here. What you would possibly like go after here, because you wouldn't want to hit like Vanquisher itself, but there's not like anything in particular that's making it like super broken like one card that makes it super broken it's just the fact that the deck it can play with no cb right right that's the issue so i mean you could always just say hit the book but i don't think the book's that big of a deal in the grand scheme of things they will just play without the book <laughs> yeah <laughs> like that's not like the book is awesome in, in vanquisher and v just because like you have the cb but if you if you hit the book out of vanquisher yeah they just they won't play it and then you know they'll just make more space to make like uh, um they'll just use that space to give you like more extender like attack extenders mm. i guess in that scenario what you would either do is remove the cards that binds cards from hand or you would hit the cards that do something when they're buying just to decrease the consistency. Like Jatura's or something? Maybe? Oh, uh, I mean, you could always just say that because it's so weird... <laughs> like, this this would so hurt the deck. I, I wouldn't even call for this unless Vanquisher was a very, very dominating force. Like, limit the full Broncho? Holy crap. That would be crazy. kind of just don't think they would... Ever do that. I don't think that. they'd ever, like, yeah. touch, like, the core of Vanquisher. But I mean, like, I mean, this is not like, and I don't even want to talk about Leopold Reverse, right? This is the other Excel deck that's going to be like really, really prominent mm. because the deck has been out for four months and barely has any tops. So. Right, right. Yeah. I, Leopold I, Reverse is a little hard to address anyway. There's a lot of stuff going to that deck. I think Great Nature deserves some time in the spotlight. It anyway. does. Yeah. You know, it's like when people say something like, oh, Deadpool's overrated. It's like, dude, guys, Deadpool hasn't been in the, like, prime media for a lot compared to a lot of other superheroes. Let him, let him live up a little bit, you know? Like, come on. You know, you want to overrate it. Talk about Superman or something. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, that, that's getting off track, though. 
So yeah, overall, oh. it, just to sort of sum up our thoughts here, prediction-wise, they're going to lightly hit Steamians, probably hit the Colossus, although they may try to go after their advantage engine, but I, I, I would say this is unexpected for Bushy, so that's our prediction. Um, and as for a wish list, I personally wish they hit the advantage engine on Steve Bands more. In addition to like, or at the very least, can you just straight up ban the Colossus and not choice restrict it? Yeah, don't, I hope they don't choice restrict it. I hope they just ban it. But I also like, if I had a wish list for Steam Main, they'd also be hitting like Gearcat to one. Right, right. Really hit that goddamn Gearcat because that Gearcat just does a lot for him. Um, the uh, as for the other stuff, we've thrown thrown our thoughts. Uh, it's somewhat hard to address these decks because they're very much a case by case basis, and it's hard to really identify issues when their prominence in the meta is suppressed by a very obvious strongest deck. I mean, we look at the first place here again. It almost took 75% of all first place tops. That's really big. Uh, so th this is what we have with B. But th just to keep things more concise, let's move on to premium here for a bit. All right, so this is where David's going to have to be a little bit more of like the, the big guy here because neither me or Juan are really big premium goons very much. I am a bit at least, but our boy here, he's got some words. Yeah, so we got to address the elephant in the room, and that is... Um eradicators so when we're talking about narakami i want to bring up that the premium format can essentially like this season can be split in two there was the first part of the format uh, and anybody who's like knows anything about premium honestly like has probably heard this a million times but there's like two parts of the season you have the first part of the season which is dominated by mfd and ripples and then the second part of the season which has been a lot better of a format honestly but has been without the MFD and Ripples, obviously. So, with Eradicators, it was the only deck that was good across all formats, or like both parts of the season. It was the only one that was like good the entire time. So, its results are a little inflated here. Um, and it, that's what it looks like too when you look at these results. Now, that doesn't mean it doesn't have like a super high conversion rate, because it does. It has a pretty good conversion rate. It's a very, very strong strategy. Um, and with the uh, it, with the introduction of Exterminate, I was trying to remember its name, um, we, you know, there's not really as good of a way to play around Stunverse, but it is a matchup that's, like, playable. And a lot of the top players agree it's not necessarily, like, the best deck, but it is the most accessible deck. And because it's the most accessible deck, you see a lot more of it in this format. So I kind of expect just like expectations from Bushi Road. I like I think that Narakami's gonna take a hit just because of representation here. And uh, if they're gonna hit anything they can like they can hit it very lightly, which would be like choice restricting, vowing saber, and stunverse. Mm. Forcing eradicators to either not play the Vowing Saber to benefit off a of Stunverse, or, you know, dropping it and then playing the Stunverse, or just going down the Steve route. So, uh, well, excuse me, the Sweep Command route. Yeah, well, I mean, I will say that the Saber alone wouldn't necessarily do it, just because we also have to consider they just fall back on Sword, which has the same primary interaction with Stunverse. Like, not too right. much changes in that way. One thing to note about that, though, is that when it was just sword, uh, the the clan wasn't really topping nearly as much. And it was like after Saber came out and then after Exterminate came out that it really started to feel a little more overwhelming. Um, so yeah. that's like the lightest possible hit they could do. They don't normally... I feel like when they hit Dex and Premium, they actually like... Hit them pretty hard sometimes. <laughs> I mean, you saw that. how they did like MFD and uh, Ripples. They were not here for it. They're like, buy Odysseus, buy MFD. Yeah, so like, that's the thing is like, when they hit a deck, now they don't always hit decks. That's part of the problem. That's why premiums wear that. But like, when they hit a deck, they go after it. <laughs> like, right, right. I don't, I don't think that's going to happen. I think like, your middle of the road here 
is hitting Stunverse to one. And because the problem with Stunverse is Stunverse's rolling advantage. Like, the first Stunverse isn't too scary. The second Stunverse is very fucking scary. Oh, yeah. And the third Stunverse just absolutely kills you. But honestly, if you're getting a third strike, you might not even be going into Stunverse at that point. But that's <laughs> You might go into Voltage or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah you, might, you might go into Voltage. Depends on how cheeky you are. But um, realistically, like, it, the, the more Stunverse you're able to play, like, the more advantage it rolls. So you might... We might see like one to one, and then the hardest hit they could do is simply banning Stunverse because I don't think they're going to ban Exterminate yet. One thing to note is that we're just going to see Steve or Sweep Command take a hold with because uh, its interaction with Exterminate's really strong. Um, and honestly, like Exterminate's a pretty busted card. <laughs> Exterminate <laughs> so really, it, it, it feels like. They wanted to play, make something that was comparable to Stunverse, but didn't do what Stunverse did. And they decided Exterminate was what we had. And it it, it works for what it is, unfortunately. Yeah, it's it's literally just like, oh, you want to counter Stunverse? Uh, exterminate. <laughs> right. Oh, you want to counter Exterminate? Stunverse. And so I, it, that's, a, that's another way they could go about doing anything. They could choice restrict the two. I kind of hate that idea, but at the same time, like, Choice for sticking exterminate and stunverse. I mean, at the same time, like a part of me really wants Vanquisher to still be a good premium deck. <laughs> so, right, right. We're, we're getting really a little bit ahead stunverse. of ourselves though, because that's like more <laughs> wishlessy than it is prediction. Yeah. If we're talking hard predictions, I think they're just yeah. going to. Personally, I think they're just going to do a three-way choice or strike between um, Sword Saber and Stunverse. That's my personal prediction because they've done that sometimes. Uh, I saw when they did the three-way choice or strike with Luar, and I, just, I don't know. It just feels like something Bushy would approach for. Uh, but that's it. I think they would just look at Naros and say, "This is the one big thing." They wouldn't bat an eye to Steam Maidens, which they absolutely should. But that's wishless. See, prediction-wise, they're not doing it. Yeah, I think that otherwise the format's been fantastic. Right, so, right. Uh, I, so, um, as far as, like, you want me to start with the wish list? Uh, I, I do want to do mention one one last thing before we go into the mm -hmm. wish list here, just to contextualize things, right? Uh, I'm, I'm looking at the first placers here for reference, and you can still see that Narukami is, like, on the top, even... On every one of these elements, Naru's are big. They are a big deal. And the, the, I want to broach a subject where people, some people, some individuals, I will not name drop these individuals because I'm not trying to be disrespectful here. But there are some particular, what would you say, metadog players who would say that Naru's are base that only bad players lose to Naru's, and that you just play around the deck. But this is just such a fundamentally flawed argument. Because, yeah, you can look at any particular game mode and say, we'll just play around the Thunderstrike, and you just do the ebb and flow of it, but unless you're going to say that all these people here, right? All of them are bad players and just lose to Naru's, clearly... Naru's have a strong foundation where they put you in a catch-22 situation and just have solid cards even beyond that. Like, their G-Guards are actually also pretty cool uh, if you know how to use them properly. Like, Naru's is not a bad deck. Naru's is not, like, something where, oh, it only gets the new players and that's why it tops. Like, like how you would argue Ammon got a lot of tops uh, not too long ago in V because... Well, not a lot, but some tops because people didn't know how to play against Ammon. This isn't that. You could know how to play Naru's all you want, and that will give you advantages. It doesn't mean you're going to necessarily win. The deck has certain unfair elements to it, like the fact that it shores up its own weaknesses, an argument we made for why Astro Poets is also a really hard deck to contend with in V. Uh, same thing here for Premium with Naru's. So I don't want to hear this, ooh, just play around Naru combi. Like, get out of here with that, man. No, it's a strong deck for a goddamn reason. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna talk about it in um, in wish list a little bit. I will kind of touch on that a little bit more. And what I, I I don't think they're I don't necessarily think they're trying to say like Narakami's a bad deck. I think they're trying to say that like there's other decks that are better, and the representation really isn't showing it. But I understand where they're coming from. 
but we'll we'll talk about that with the wish list because there's a couple cards I really want mm, gone. Yeah, yeah. I, I just want to throw that out there because I have seen some people actually say that Naru's are bad. Like not 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 even say, oh well, it's not necessarily the best deck in the format like BDIF or whatever. Like if you argue BDIF, we're gonna get into BDIF, but I've actually heard some of these uh unnamed individuals here say, no, it's a bad clan. Like Naru is bait. It's uh... And I'm like, this this is the flawed argument. This is what I want to hit. But it, it, you, you, I'm really glad that you brought up the distinction. Not everyone is saying that. Anyone who says it's not necessarily the best in the format, that makes sense. We saw a similar case here in Standard, to curse back to that, where technically Gravidia has the most tops, but I wouldn't call it BDIF in uh, Standard right now. I would say Ava's BDIF. But anyway, that's a different format. We've already been over that. So, wishlist time. Let's talk about those goddamn Steam Maidens. <laughs> Yeah, so with Steam Maidens, like, the problem is they have, like, everything that V has. Um, and they have the Colossus, so they have the Garter Strict, they have Antara, so they have uh, a really good Grade 2 game. And a Grade 2 game is way more important in Premium than it is in V. Mm -hmm. Way more important. Mm. Um, but the biggest thing is they also have a write down. <laughs> like, they have all that, and then they have a write down. Um, and that's uh, Inglisa, if you're not familiar so the problem and i'm i'm not necessarily like on the oh we need thailand rules like write downs are bad i'm not necessarily on that train because i think for some decks it's a tool and not just like the same like flavor of write downs some people think that like you know like a lot of write down decks are doing well and it's all just different flavors of write down i don't think that's true necessarily i think because there's some decks you don't want to write down into like if i was playing in lk i would not want to write down <laughs> i would be scared i'd be scared to write down against nlk and there's a few other examples right but like you don't always want to write down and i think it's a tool uh but you have to use it appropriately but then again i understand like the point of premium is that you want to stride so like i understand why people don't like write downs but if we're talking about the maidens in premium, I think it just does a little too much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It has too much card advantage. It has a turn wide guard restrict, and it also has a ride down. Huh. And its strides aren't too shabby either. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> it's it's almost like it's the tier zero V premium deck, but more. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, I heard that before. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> with. With this deck, I, there's a few ways you can like approach it. Um, I and know a lot of people are on the ban Intahara hype because like Intahara is like so much better at premium. Oh than my SMV. god, yeah. <laughs> so we're talking about one thing you could do is you could choice restrict Intahara with Inglisa and just say, oh, you want to play the mains in premium? Well, you're gonna have to play a lull. There you, you don't go. need to play the ride down. So that's one thing you can do, and that's not that's not a bad thing. Um, but you also might want to ban Colossus and bring him too. Just being honest, <laughs> not a fair card. Right, right. I, I I would honestly say that just Colossus in general is poor design choice because the same basic principle to V is going to of course apply to premium. Any V deck necessarily that is going to be able to abuse Colossus, of, of which there are going to be more in in existence later on. I. That you just apply that to premium, be even like even worse I'm because stuck. the thing about like your your cards in premium is you can even play some generic stuff if you wanted to go for it that just time leap into Colossus. So you could just proof out that Colossus really on command in a in a clan like your Chronicle. Like, like for instance, who who's stopping somebody from just throwing in a history maker to just see if you want to get your Colossus from deck? <laughs> It's funny because, like, even in, in premium, I think it's even worse because it's on a rear guard circle, mm -hmm. which means it yep. actually matters a lot less, like, what your vanguard is doing because you're striding. So you have a lot of options essentially on what your vanguard actually does. 
And so a rear guard guard turn right guard trick can essentially just be played in like any Air Chronicle deck in the future. Right. And like, I don't know, it's just not good for like the future of game design. So like, I fully expect like something like this if I really like thought they were going to hit Gear Chronicle, which I don't think they're going to, but I want to hope, you know? Maybe, maybe, you know, if Bushy just decided to have a bright day, right? You know, they, they drank their morning coffee, they went to the gym and decided... Let's do some good today, right? They they banned Colossus and V, and they're like, you know what? Maybe we could do this for Premium 2. Just get rid of Colossus, period, right? Is that, I mean, it, it's probably the least stretchy thing <laughs> in compared to a lot of wishlist stuff. I, I, my wishlist, personally, is I am i don't know how I feel about Thavis and Premium right now. <laughs> I feel like yeah, Thavis I mean, is like, like even more out of control with his Spanish engine and stuff. Yeah, Thalos is, like, really just doing what V does, um, except, you know, they can, um, ride down. They right, can ride right. down. So, um, that's, that's kind of, like, I think Thalos is actually being kind of held up by its ride down. Mm -hmm. The fact that it can, like, do as much as it can do on that first, like, grade three ride and then ride down. But, like... Uh, again, like with ride downs, like I feel like Thalus like really commits to that play, and then like they just get eight by NLK, or like even hell, even like Golds. And Golds isn't even a great deck, but like you see them like um, pump out that many XL circles on like their turn three, then they can just like kill you out of left field because you're on a great two. Like <laughs> it's just um, you gotta be careful ish on like your ride down plays. Uh, but, you know, good pilots are going to still do well with it, of course. But right. um, the next deck we need to talk about is Highlander. Highlander. Uh, mm. This one's an interesting one to talk about. So <laughs> Highlander is a really hard deck to pilot. Um, it, you have about, I think, 34 different decision trees, I believe is what the number is. You have so many things you can do. You have answers to every matchup period you have massive but you have to know what the fuck you're doing <laughs> and sometimes you brick sometimes you brick because it's highlander uh so sometimes it just loses it to itself but if you look at the conversion rate on this fucking deck it's stupid mm, right <laughs> it's got it's got one of the dumbest conversion rates in the entire game like if they if a good player makes its top eight it feels like they always get first or second <laughs> it's so crazy um but like Highlander is hard deck. Um, and one thing, if you're playing like BRO or something, you might not see very many Highlanders because of how much shuffling the deck does. You literally have to like cut your deck like so many times per turn. It literally just takes too long in a BRO setting or something like that. Um, but realistically, for game health design, Katire is a bad card. <laughs> or Kutire, however you want to pronounce it. Um, this card's not good it's, design. It's not even a little bit general. fair, dude. Like I like this is one of those cards where I I can candidly ask what was Bushy smoking. <laughs> this like, is okay, so, so like search any card in your deck. Yeah, what this card. Does. It, it, this, it, is, it, this is a um, crazy. This is a tutor. Yeah, this is a tutor for anything in your deck. So like maybe not. And <laughs> maybe this is not okay. And this is Bermuda we're talking about. V has done so much to give Bermuda this crazy toolbox. And it, it also because this is Bermuda, you can use lyrical cards. I'm looking at Dar Derek Dow's topping list for Vietnam with Highlander. He he just straight up uh, went all the way with it. And I can actually see like lyrical cards in here too. You've got the whole shebang and. This also includes generic staples like our boy Hanali and stuff. Like this deck yeah. just has such a powerful command of its cards. And that's a that's something about like all of the top decks. They're actually all pretty good, except for like Nara. But like they're all like really good at like cheesing out Hanali. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Which like, you know, is necessary. Especially against like NLK. But um like it, it keeps a lot of other decks 
like lower the fact that there's like these decks that just have like such a large toolbox of access to uh and it, that that's where grand blue is as well you know it just has this giant toolbox uh and it can cheese out homilies <laughs> but um hmm. yeah this is that's part of the thing um i think especially in premium i, I honestly think the fact that Katire is banned in v but not in premium is actually backwards to me <laughs> I think it's it's completely backwards because I feel like Katire is an even worse card in premium because oh. your card pool is bigger. Well, I, I I think it's only backwards in the sense that it should have gone in premium before it got in V, but it should just be gone in both formats. It should just be not oh, a card. <laughs> yeah, it's it's literally one of the worst design cards one, I've ever read. One interesting uh, thing about this, and I, I I I talked about this a bit, right? I don't believe they're going to hit this deck at all however if one was to make the argument right if one was to potentially cope a little and say bushy is going to know to kick highlander out the argument that you could make for it is that bushy on their last when, when they did the jp bannings right you know just last jp ban list the reason why they hit ebisu but not Coragen youthberg was they said uh, verbatim that Ebisu had a higher conversion than Youthberg and Chronojet. So that's why they decided to hit Ebisu and the other two are on the watch list. Now, if you're going by conversion, Highlander should have a pretty crazy inversion uh, conversion because there's not a lot... Of, you need to have a really like, skilled pilots to do this, so not a lot of people are taking it. But the dudes that are taking this and know what they're doing, which they obviously know what they're doing, they're doing pretty well with it. So you have a high conversion. Now, I'm not sure this is like Nightmare Doll level conversion or something, but this conversion was pretty insane. So you could make that argument. I don't think Bushy is going to care regardless because this isn't popping up enough for them to even like bat an eye on it, in my opinion. But that's just me. Uh, in terms of power level, can we just, this is the one deck where I'm like, wow, I love to leave Yu-Gi-Oh, but why is Yu-Gi-Oh in my good Christian Vanguard? <laughs> Like, it, they take so long with their turns. They really do. So, that's where I stand with the deck. I don't like it, but they're not hitting it. But you could make the conversion argument if you wanted to. Yeah, just, I kind of, like, again, like, hitting Bermuda is a wish list. Hitting Gear Chronicles is a wish list. Other than that, like, we're experiencing a pretty good format. Yeah. Um, I, I have a sneaky I, suspicion for my prediction. They're not hitting a single goddamn thing. That's my sneaky uh, suspicion. I, there, there is there is that suspicion that they that it's going to be a no-hit list for premium. I kind of think they will hit Nara, uh, just because of like the uh, the sheer number of tops. But I don't realize like I think if you keep going, if this format were to keep going, Narakami's like uh, percentage would drop. Right as we right. move forward. Yeah, that that uh, that's the thing. It was, it was very like strong at the start. Of the second half of the season because like it was the only deck that didn't get murdered from the previous season so a lot of people just <laughs> held on to it and they kept doing well for it but like the more the format progressed like the less you saw of it and i think in general as well like I, I, although my wish list is stunverse to one because i think that's just the best way to approach something like stunverse i just don't see them doing uh, it like just it, it like my mind says they'll do it. My heart tells me that Bushy is going to say deal with it. Your format is fine. Uh, it's fine. Whatever they do, it it's it's okay. I guess you know Naros is not that big of a problem, especially when when you look at it. One argument for Steam Maidens being BDIF, which I kind of agree with it, is their matchup with some of the other best decks is really good like especially naru's because naru's gimmick sort of plays into their own an extent now this goes both ways because uh starburst can benefit off of their binds but you see where i'm going with this right the uh steam maidens don't really have like they don't take as hard of an l from binds so that inherently gives them sort of a leg up they don't they don't have weakness right premium. yeah that's steam that's an issue <laughs> Steam Maidens have no weakness in premium. Steam Maidens is probably the best deck in premium. Right. It's terrible. It's the deck's best deck in premium, best deck in premium. Um, and uh, Chronos is the best deck in uh, standard right now. Uh, for Yep. 
Let me let me cope. <laughs> let me cope until February. <laughs> I'm just saying it, bro. Gear Chronicles dominated us. <laughs> I, I I have to put it out. So that that's where we stand. Predi uh, the prediction got, goes one of two ways. Either the you got David's side of it, which your your side of it was what again? Uh, I mean, I think they're either gonna like hit it very lightly by Choice Shrieking, Valing Saber, and Stunverse, or they're going to hit it moderately and hit Stunverse to one. I don't think they're gonna ban Stunverse though. Gotcha. Uh, my prediction is they're doing nothing, <laughs> which is pretty lame. But if they were to do something, then I would say the Stunverse to one. But yeah, I I, I don't think they're doing anything with it. And uh, for you guys who are wondering why, like, uh, Juan has been silent here, it's because Bro doesn't play premium, so we, we've got nothing to add here, right? Uh, yeah, I'm just here sitting back, letting you guys spit out your thoughts. But <laughs> it, it's always interesting to hear, because even though this is a Banner's Prediction video, this also feels like a meta discussion video. In, in a sense, sure. right? It, which and it makes sense because they're sort of intertwined. These sort of topics. Uh, I, is there anything else to talk with premium? Because I think we sort of covered the big stuff, like some of the other stuff down here, like Nightmare Dolls, Regalia, Hell Even the Beatrice Toolbox. These decks are fine. They don't really feel that out of place um, by comparison. They they feel more up to stuff with what premium like could be and still be fine. Go Spike Brothers. Ah, uh, yeah, Rising Greed on. Let's go. We got our list right here, actually, for it. Uh, but <laughs> it did really, it did really well once it got to top cut. But anyways, no, I don't think there's anything like as far as predictions go. I've kind of like or like we we discussed the predictions. I, yeah, I'm honestly like kind of leaning towards your prediction of like there not being any hits, but I also kind of think they're gonna address Narakami. I just do. I think I think they're gonna address it, but I I don't think they're gonna do too much. Mm. Um. But as far as like wish list goes, like I could go on. <laughs> right, <laughs> really, right. I, I didn't even talk about. I didn't even talk about over triggers, and we're not going to talk about that. But <laughs> I just, you know, they are what they are. We we all know what that topic is. <laughs> we're just not gonna. We're not gonna talk about it. But um, it's obvious. Anyways, um, yeah, that's 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 all I got for premium. I don't want to talk about anything else because there's like. I think the form is actually really good. Yeah, it's it's in a it's in a pretty nice space, especially when more and more standard cards are actually providing interesting variants and elements to the decks, not including overtrickers, of course. But uh, like for instance, to, when you look at something like Rising Greed on here, they have their Mikani's and of course the Greedons themselves. Like this is these are interesting cards. And then with the Highlander, they were also using some lyrical stuff. They, the standard is slowly becoming a bit more relevant in an okay way. For premium, which is nice because V completely shattered the format. Uh, <laughs> or uh, say Inlet Pulse with uh, Gridora. Mmm, uh, Inlet Gridora, yeah. Uh, then, of course, you have your actual bad example, which was our Mr. Book Retriever with uh, Gridora. <laughs> but that's, that, that's the bad guy, right? He's the villain of this story. <laughs> So yeah, I, I think that I more mean, or less covers that. I, I don't think there's any other decks of premium to talk about. Like, everything else feels more or less up to snuff and okay. Fun. fun. Everything else feels fun. I love it. Yeah, <laughs> especially some deep lease. I, I, I do be liking some deep lease and premium because I want the biggest numbers ever known to man. Uh, excluding overshakers, again. Uh, so... <laughs> With that said, I think this more or less wraps up our discussion. We're in an interesting place with the English ban list because, of course, the precedent could be more or less the same as what the JP is. But you've heard our predictions. You've heard our wish list. Even let us know in the comment section down below what you guys think is going to happen and what you guys would want to happen with this upcoming list. And if there's any other comments or suggestions with this video format, other videos we can do, uh, just let us know. We're always up for a discussion. Uh, I especially love to keep tabs with my comment sections. Uh, hearing what you guys have to say is one of the greatest parts of being a YouTuber. Not even going to cap about that. So if you did like this video, I've got lots of other stuff in the channel. Other discussion videos, we've got fight nights, if that's going to scratch your itch, top tens, tier list, the whole shebang. So check that out, maybe leave a subscribe and turn on the notification bell while you're there. And with that, take care, God bless.